Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Senator Sessions and I come to the Senate floor today to discuss the Child Tax Credit Integ Integrity Preservation Act, a bill I introduced last year to address a real problem with IRS enforcement, allowing illegal aliens to access the additional child tax credit. Mr. President, the reality is because of this enforcement problem, because of this loophole in terms of how the child tax credit is enforced, illegal aliens who pay no taxes, who are not entitled to this benefit, to this check from the government, receive $4.2 billion in 2010 alone, checks from the government through the Child Tax Credit Act. There have been several studies under this President Obama administration that say this is ridiculous, this is unintended, we need to stop this. So I'm proposing we do, we move forward in a simple, bipartisan, common sense way to stop it. Let me briefly note some of those studies. March 2009, the Treasury Department said, quote, as it now stands, the payment of federal funds through this tax benefit appears to provide an additional incentive for aliens to enter, reside, and work in the United States without authorization, which contradicts federal law and policy to remove such incentives." Close quote. In July 2011, again, the Treasury Department, through its Inspector General, uh, issued a report that was actually entitled, quote, individuals who were not authorized to work in the United States were paid $4.2 billion in refundable credits, close quote. So again, under this administration, the Treasury Department, the IRS, underscore that this is a huge problem to the tune of $4.2 billion every year. And so, Mr. President, I urge all of us to come together in a straightforward, common sense, bipartisan way to fix this problem. The fix is simple and it's clear. The IRS, the Treasury Department has told us we simply need to mandate that folks applying for the credit use valid social security numbers. That will cut off the fraud, that will cut off $4.2 billion going improperly to illegal alien families. It will not cut off the benefit going to anyone who deserves it under the law. And so, Mr. President, uh, with that, I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Finance be discharged from further consideration of S-577, the Child Tax Credit Integrity Preservation Act, and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration that the bill be read a third time and passed the motion to reconsider be laid upon the table, and any statements relating to the measure appear at the appropriate place in the record as if read. Is there objection? Majority Leader? Reserving the right to object. I first of all want to express my appreciation to the Senator from Louisiana and the Senator from uh, Alabama for their courtesy, and they're going to talk a lot longer than what he's talked now. And in recognizing that there would be a good chance that I would object to their request, they have agreed to allow me to say a few words before they finish what they want to say here on the Senate floor. So I appreciate that courtesy very much, because I do have some other things I need to work on. Um, Mr. President, the Vitter Sessions legislation literally takes a sledgehammer to a problem that deserves some very fine tuning scalpel. There are news reports that have suggested that some have claimed the child tax credit for children who actually live outside the United States. The tax code is very clear that a child tax credit is not available for children living outside the United States. Very clear. And if, in fact, someone is doing that, then those filers and taxpayers are committing fraud on the people of this country. And that's something, if they are doing that, and there's any loophole that's existing, we need to close that loophole. Chairman Baucus has already had his staff working with the IRS to 
determine if its procedures are strong enough to stop such fraud. We believe they are, but if they're not, then it's up to us, Congress, to plug any loopholes that may exist. The Vitter Sessions legislation, however, eliminates the child tax credit for filers who are fully complying with the law. That isn't a good result. In fact, this legislation that's proposed here fails to address the issue of the child tax credit being claimed for children not living in the United States. So the problem is not solved by this legislation. The legislation goes well beyond what's necessary to stop fraud and child tax, the child tax credit program, and therefore I object to the consent request. The objection is heard. Ms. The senator from Louisiana. Mr. President, before the distinguished majority leader has to leave, I would just ask through the chair so that we can get some clarification and, and hopefully come to some consensus. Is he suggesting that folks in the country illegally, illegal aliens in the country, should continue to receive the credit? And is he suggesting that citizens who happen to live outside the country who qualify for the credit shouldn't get it? Seems to me the problem is illegal aliens receiving the credit wherever they are physically, not people outside the country receiving the credit, some of whom qualify for the credit. And if I could bring that point up through the chair. Mr. President, without, leader. without uh, fully debating this subject, and perhaps others know more about it than I do, but what I do know is that we want to make sure that any, any children are here who are American citizens who are entitled to this, they get the, the benefits if they're American citizens. Well, well, thank you. Uh, Senator from Louisiana. Thank you for that clarification, I would say, through the chair. And, and we have the same goal in mind exactly. And I believe this approach of the Vitter Bill, uh, the House has already passed this approach recently in its budget outline, uh, actually accomplishes that. Because by requiring a valid Social Security number, we allow everyone who truly qualifies for the credit to get it and we stop it from going to illegal alien families who do not deserve the credit under the law. And I'd invite my distinguished colleague from Alabama to, to add to the discussion. President. The Senator from Alabama. Uh, I do thank the chair, and I appreciate the insight that the majority leader um, provided. We'll look at that and uh, see where we stand on it, but I would urge that we do not need to wait a great deal of time for this to be fixed. The Inspector General of the United States Treasury Department started raising this in, formally in 2005. Actually, the issue came up in 2007 from individuals in the Treasury Department who thought something wrong was occurring. So the Inspector General did a report, and he calls on us to uh, fix it. Uh, in fact, he said in his report, quote, we continue to believe the legislation is needed to ensure compliance with both laws, close quote. So I, I would say that that is uh, what we need to do. The House has acted, and we should act. Four billion dollars a year is a great deal of money. It's about 10 million dollars a day that's going out of the country uh, to individuals who should not be receiving it. According to the Inspector General report, the amount of the child tax credit, and as Senator Vitter said, this isn't a tax deduction. This is a $1,000 per child tax credit that you have for people in the United States who work, who have worked lawfully, who have children, and they get a check. And if they owe no income tax at all, and many low you know, a substantial percentage of the people who work in America don't end up paying income tax, but you still get a check from Uncle Sam for $1,000 per child. It was a policy I supported because over the years, the families had not gained uh, the kind of deductible advantage that had been done 30 years ago when people had children, and it sort of leveled the playing field and helped the working families raise children. 
in, 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 a, in a decent environment. And, and it's a policy that I like, but it's not for somebody illegally here who has children in some foreign country. That noted that uh, filers, uh, to $924 million in 2005. In 2006, it was $1 billion three. In 2007, $1 billion seven. 2008, $2.1 billion. 2009, $2.9 billion. And from 2009, Senator Vetter, when you first, uh, 2009 to 2010, it went from 2.9 to 4.2. It's been surging every year. And I would say as a matter of protecting the treasury of the United States from abuse, the IG says we need legislation. You've drafted, I think, legislation that will do the job precisely as it should. Don't you think Congress should not be waiting around here another year? But it's something the House has already passed, and if we passed, it would become law in, in a matter of uh, days, perhaps. Mr. President? Senator from Louisiana. Mr. President, Mr. President, if I could respond through the chair, I absolutely agree with the Senator from Alabama. You know, Mr. President, too often folks in Washington want to make things overly complicated. Some things in this world, some things being debated in the Congress are complicated. Other things are not. They're just made a whole lot more complicated than they need to be made. And this is one of those. Um, all we're saying is folks who, apply, who qualify for this benefit under the law should get it. But folks who don't qualify, including illegal alien families, should absolutely not get it. The law is clear on that. What we have is an enforcement problem. We also have the Obama administration itself, through the Treasury Department, absolutely agreeing that this is an enforcement problem and that this bill is the legitimate and the proper solution. Again, March 2009, the Treasury said, quote, as it now stands, the payment of federal funds through this tax benefit appears to provide an additional incentive for aliens to enter, reside, and work in the U.S. without authorization, close quote. That means it's a magnet to draw more illegal crossings into the country. Again, July 2007, the Treasury Inspector General had a whole report, and the title was, quote, individuals who were not authorized to work in the United States were paid $4.2 billion in refundable credits, close quote. That Inspector General said that what we need is a fix legislation just like this. And in fact, this is what we do with regard to the earned income tax credit. We require for that separate tax credit a valid social security number. And we're simply applying that valid fix to this different tax credit. So again, let's not make a pretty straightforward situation difficult. Let's fix a glaring problem. And as the senator from Alabama has said, it's a 4.2 billion dollars a year problem. We come to the floor every day to talk about soaring deficits and debt, to talk about impending cuts in defense and other areas. And yet, we have this glaring 4.2 billion dollar savings that we're not taking advantage of. The House has acted. The House recently acted to pass exactly this provision. Let's act in a bipartisan, common sense way in the Senate and tell the American people we're going to stop wasting $4.2 billion a year for this completely unauthorized purpose. Um, I would point out to my colleagues how much $4 billion is. It's a matter that we deal with on a regular basis around here. It's a number that's come up several times recently. For example, we had a shortfall in our plans to fund the federal highway program at a deeply disappointing event that we couldn't get that bill passed. It started out 
as a $4 billion shortfall. They worked that number down, but they were still not fully paid for. We lack just a few billion dollars to pay for the bill that hasn't been passed. The student loan fix, where the interest rates would be dropped. If I'm not mistaken, that was $4 billion. Needed to, to reduce interest rates on students. $4 billion, according to the IG, is going out of our country illegally every uh, year that we could save. The president spent a lot of time traveling around the country saying we should raise taxes on the rich and we should pass the Buffett tax. And he had a proposal for the Buffett tax. How much would the Buffett tax raise? $4 billion. That's how much uh, this illegal event occurs. Frankly, I'm a little disappointed that the, the Treasury Department officials and the administration itself hasn't seized immediately upon this loophole that's costing the taxpayers large amounts of money and uh, responded themselves, sent legislation over and asked us to pass it. Why aren't they asking us to pass it to begin with? Well, the Inspector General, who's an uh, independent quasi, uh, gets some little independence within the Department of Treasury, but is in fact an employee of the Secretary of Treasury, he says we need this legislation. Quote in his report, quote, clarification to the law is needed to address whether or not refundable tax credits such as ACTC may be paid to those who are not authorized to work in the United States. Well, of course they ought not to be getting a check from uh, the United States taxpayer if they're not authorized to be working here. So as a ranking member on the budget, knowing how tight our budget is, uh, I salute Senator Vitter, not just for doing it this year, but he saw this problem last year and uh, attempted to get it passed. And I'm pleased that the House has passed it. I, I think if we keep working at it, Senator Vitter, maybe we can get it done through the Senate, remembering that $10 million a day is going out of the country for every day we fail to act. Mr. President? Louisiana. Mr. President, I want to thank my colleague from Alabama very much for his leadership on the Budget Committee and his leadership on issues like this. And I want to encourage this distinguished majority leader to look at the actual details of the problem and this legislation. When he does, he'll see that this legislation is very finely tuned to the actual problem. And it is an outrageous problem. Mr. President, there was quite a bit of media attention on this abuse in the last several months. A lot of it came out of Indiana, and a tax preparer there brought cases in Indiana, said he got no response from the IRS when he tried to report completely fraudulent returns using fake income and documents. He pointed to a number of actual tax forms in which illegal aliens were exploiting this. And he said, quote, I can bring out stacks and stacks. It's just so easy, it's ridiculous, close quote. And an illegal alien who was actually interviewed admitted in another case that his address was used by four other illegal aliens who didn't even live there. All told, they claimed 20 children were living in one trailer and they received checks from the government through this program totaling over $29 thousand dollars. Only one child was ever observed at that mobile home. Twenty other children live in Mexico, have never even visited the U.S. Again, Mr. President, let's not make a simple fix overly complicated because it's not. This is an outrageous abuse. The Obama administration Treasury Department has said so. They have endorsed this fix. The House has passed this fix. Let's us in the Senate pass this fix on a bipartisan basis and save the American taxpayer $4.2 billion each and every year. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from Alabama. Just to conclude, I think the American people are unhappy with their leaders. They feel like that the money that they've sent here is not being well spent, not being watched closely enough. We have a big judicial conference for the second 
year since 2010, the second time, uh, to go to spend a million dollars on a resort conference in Maui. Uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, Solyndra loans going out to cronies that are not being paid back in any way. We have the General Service Administration having a big party out at Las Vegas with hot tubs and, and uh, magicians and so forth. Uh, we've got no budget for three consecutive years in the United States Senate. And what are we hearing uh, from uh, many of our leaders here in Washington? Well, we've got a problem, American people. We've got too big a debt. Send us more money. Send more money. We, not ha we don't have enough. We're borrowing 40 cents of every dollar we spend. Send more money. I think the American people are tired of hearing that. I think they have a right to be tired of hearing that. Until this country is willing to face up to save $10 million a day on this kind of manipulation that's been going on since 2007 at least and been uh, raised by the Inspector General since 2009, until those kind of things are stopped, I don't think they should send any more money to Washington. We need to, we need to honor the money they're spending. So, Mr. President, I thank the chair and and would yield the floor. Mr. President.